Hello, I'm Too Tight Lechek. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to my opening. Hello, bonjour, and welcome to my opening where I serve as your very own personal shopper for literary fiction. I read the opening passages of books that I recommend for one reason or another, and then you can decide if you'd like to read them on your own after I'm finished. We're going to get right into it today. We're going to concentrate our minds, block out all errant noises, and start with this book that I actually found on my bookshelf and don't remember buying. <laughs> I don't know if someone left it for me as a gift, but there's no note inside. But it's The Lost Honor of Katerina Bloom by Heinrich Bohl. Now, it was originally published in 1974. I have some notes here. It was originally published in 1974, and it was called, I mean, it was in German, so it was called Die Verloren Ära der Katharina Blum oder Wie Gewalt entstehen und von sie führen kann. Of course it was. Um, the Lost Honor of Katharina Blum. Heinrich Bull was born December 21st, 1917, and he died July 16th, 1985. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1972, which the German Conservative Party derided because they felt it awarded uh, the Nobel Prize only to liberals and left-wing radicals. Which is why I'm happy to jump into this today. The Lost Honor of Katharina Blum by Heinrich Bohl. I'm going to read the first three chapters. For the following account, there are a few minor sources and three major ones. These will be named here at the beginning and not referred to again. Major sources are the transcripts of the police interrogation, Hubert Blorna, attorney, and Peter Hock, public prosecutor, also high school and university classmate of Hubert Blorna. It was Hock who, in confidence, needless to say, supplemented the transcripts and reported certain measures taken by the police investigators, as well as the results of their inquiries absent from the transcripts. Not, we hasten to add, for official purposes, but solely for private use. Hach was genuinely affected by the concern and frustration suffered by his friend Blorna, who could find no explanation for the whole affair, and yet, when I come to think about it, found it not inexplicable but almost logical. Since the case of Katerina Bloom will, in any event, remain more or less fictitious because of the attitude of the accused and the very awkward position of her defense counsel, Blorna, such minor and very human lapses in conduct as those committed by Hock may not only be understandable but forgivable. The minor sources, some of greater and some of lesser significance, need not be mentioned here, since their respective implication, involvement, relevancy, bias, bewilderment, and testimony will all emerge from this report. <clears throat> if this report, since there is such frequent mention of sources, should at times be felt to be fluid, we beg the reader's forgiveness. It has been unavoidable. To speak of sources and fluidity is to preclude all possibility of composition, so perhaps we should instead introduce the concept of bringing together, of conduction, a concept that should be clear to anyone who, as a child, or even as an adult, has ever played in, beside, or with puddles, draining them, linking them by channels, emptying, diverting, and rerouting them until the entire available puddle water potential is brought together in a collective channel to be diverted onto a different level, or perhaps even duly rerouted in orderly fashion into the gutter or drain provided by the local authorities. The sole objective here, therefore, is to effect a kind of drainage, clearly a due process of order. 
So whenever this account appears to be in a fluid state in which differences in and adjustments to level play a part, we ask the reader's indulgence, since there will always be stoppages, blockages, siltings, unsuccessful attempts at conduction, and sources that can never come together, not to mention subterranean streams, and so on, and so on. The first facts to be presented are brutal. On Wednesday, February 20th, 1974, on the eve of the traditional opening of Carnival, a young woman of 27 leaves her apartment in a certain city at about 6.45 p.m. to attend a dance at a private home. Four days later, after a dramatic, there's no getting around the word, and here we have an example of the various levels that permit the stream to flow, turn of events, on Sunday evening at almost the same hour, to be precise at about 7.04 p.m. She rings the front doorbell at the home of Walter Mooding, crime commissioner, who is at that moment engaged for professional rather than private reasons in disguising himself as a sheik. And she declares to the startled Mooding that at about 12.15 noon that day, she shot and killed Werner Totkus, reporter in her apartment. And would the commissioner kindly give instructions for her front door to be broken down and the reporter to be removed? For her part, she has spent the hours between 12.15 noon and 7 p.m. roaming around town in search of a remorse that she has failed to find. Furthermore, she requests that she be arrested. She would like to be where her dear Ludwig is. Mooding to whom the young person is known from various interrogations and who feels a certain sympathy toward her, does not doubt her statement for a moment. He drives her in his own car to police headquarters, informs his superior, Chief Crime Commissioner Beismena, of the situation, has the young woman escorted to a cell, and 15 minutes later meets Beismena outside her front door, where a police commando breaks down the door and finds the young woman's statement confirmed. Let there not be too much talk about blood here, since only necessary differences in level are to be regarded as inevitable. We would therefore direct the reader to television and to the movies and the appropriate musicals and grusicals. If there is to be something fluid here, let it not be blood. Perhaps attention should merely be drawn to certain color effects. The murdered Totkus was wearing an improvised sheet costume concocted from a rather worn sheet, and the effect of a lot of blood on a lot of white is well known. A pistol is then sure to act almost like a spray gun, and since in this instance the costume was made out of a large square of white cotton, modern painting or stage effects would seem to be more appropriate here than drainage. So be it. Those are the facts. And that was the first three chapters of The Lost Honor of Katerina Bloom by Heinrich Bohl, which I suggest you run out and buy immediately. Give your local bookstore a boost. Put a smile on your local librarian's face. As for this book, you'll sure to make a new friend someplace. Meanwhile, keep your eyes and ears open because the world is full of wonder. That's correct. So now all you have to do is subscribe, like, and share the video. And go on with your day. Let me know if you, if anybody's out there, if you've read the book and how you liked it. Meanwhile, I'll see you next time and we'll talk about what's good to read. I'm Too Tight Latrek. Mwah.